Hi everybody, my name is Rhys Barber. I'm the audiologist here at Audiology Associates. We upload new earwax removal videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 9 p.m. UK time, so please consider subscribing. Hi everybody, this is Rhys Barber from Audiology Associates. Thank you very much for watching the earwax removal video today. This lady's come through with very blocked up ears in both on both sides, really been struggling with her hearing, little bit of discomfort in here as well caused by the wax pressing on the canal walls but um, no other signs or symptoms apart from that one really so what you can see is that we've got some really tough um, hard wax now this lady's never had her ears cleaned out before uh, so we've tried using the standard size on the tube but it's just not getting a grip on this wax you can see there's lots of dry flaky bits of skin around the outer entrance to the canal there which shows me that this lady does suffer a little bit with dry skin so there's probably not a great deal of oil being produced in this ear canal which can then effectively dry out the wax so you get a very dry and hardened up wax what's complicating things a little bit is the entrance to the canal is so narrow um, as we get older sometimes our ear canal will go from that nice rounded shape to a much more narrow very uh, thin oval shape and you can see that we're having a little bit of difficulty getting the uh, the ear canal to accommodate the Jobson horn at the moment we're using the Jobson over the Zolna tube just because the wax is so tough and so hardened up that to use the Zolna tube to try and remove the wax is going to be difficult it's not going to get a grip on there and it's just going to keep brushing against the outer edge so we're going to use a combination of the Jobson horn to break the wax down you can see just how tough that is there it's really difficult to get the the Jobson into it but we're going to use the Jobson horn to break the wax down and then tidy up the ear canal then tidy up the looser sections um, with the Zolna tube a bit later on then so just clearing up some of the outer sections here just lifting from the bottom the Jobson horn does a great job because because of the way it's designed to be used is to go kind of ideally behind the wax and, and then bring it forward what you tend to do it'll take the top sections away really easily but it's difficult sometimes to get the bottom sections um, lifted off the canal with it without causing a little bit of discomfort in there so just probing along the outside edge of this wax see if there's any looser pieces that we can just uh, hoover up with the Zolna tube taking away any loose debris that's there so you can see we're just using the Jobson horn we can't get behind the wax so we're just using any leading edge of wax any protrusion of wax we're just using the Jobson horn to chip into that at the moment because there's no gap <clears throat> excuse me I'm sorry because there's no gap the St. Bart's hook wouldn't go down the side of this either there's just not enough gap between the wax and the canal wall itself so we're just having to chip away at the wax here you can see just taking small pieces away it's really tough old stuff and with the size of the canal being as small as it is it's very difficult to get a really good bit of purchase behind that wax to get it down through so just try to chip away at the top section here a little gap there just trying to open that out you can just you can see it's not really getting a good um, a good grip behind that wax it's just chipping the front edge down as it is there look you can't get behind it it's literally just breaking that that sort of almost that ledge of wax at the, at the top there there you go just tiny tiny pieces coming away You can see where the Jobson horn is pulling the central sections of wax out but obviously it's leaving the sections 
stuck to the canal walls left right you can see it's just flicking against the side of it look it's not actually bringing this forward so you've got to push against the side of the wax to bring this out so it's just taking central pieces away leaving the outside edge uh, sections there which is why we will change tools quite often so this is the crocodile forceps going in now we're trying to see if we can get a grip on some of this wax because it is quite dry sometimes if you you get a nice piece that you can get a good grip on it'll bring a, a, a big chunk out with it but it's quite crumbly and dry so you can see just how hard it is when I'm trying to use the Zolna tube to bring this bottom section of wax here off the canal wall so we're going to use the crocodile forceps now we've lifted a little bit of wax at the base there so we're just going to try to use the crocodile forceps to get underneath it but you can see just how crumbly this is it's this kind of odd consistency of wax it's not strong enough to be able to bring uh, large sections away but it's also um, not sort of weak enough in places to be able to pull out large bits using the suction either it's all a case of chipping away and breaking these smaller pieces away you can see there we've got to get one larger drier piece but there's a lot more still in here because this this patient hasn't uh, really been experiencing too many hearing issues until the last few weeks uh, this has meant that this wax has, has gone completely unnoticed it's really um, been plugging the ear canal very slowly uh, keeping a small gap uh, in here which has been allowing the sound through the problem then is you don't really get uh, this sort of sudden drop in hearing which would uh, which would encourage most people to come along you can see a little bit of dry skin there as well this sort of plate uh, or flake of dry skin coming away So there's just not enough uh, space in here really to get a, a fantastic grip with the crocodile forceps. You can see a little bit more of this dry skin at the entrance here. There we are. It's got that flake away. There's a lot of wax stuck to the left hand side canal wall here as you're looking at it. You can see they're just peeling away with this on the tube, just slowly working it off the canal wall. See it all starting to lift away there now. see just how firmly that's held in there so we use the Jobson horn now we've loosened it off the canal wall just to roll this section out there we go you can see there's still more in here a little bit of dry skin there lifting off the the base of the canal wall so to to help with this kind of thing where you get this dry uh, drier canals forming this this um, this slightly harder looking ear wax you can use a little bit of olive oil in here on a regular basis which will help to not only moisturize the canal but it'll help to keep this wax a little bit softer because you can see it how much of this is built up Just using the bottom edge of the forceps to lift this wax try and break it down a little bit and at the moment it's formed a, a solid hard dried lump um, almost like a little wall of wax in there so taking away some of the looser debris
Can you see the whole thing is moving in one piece? And there's it's the front is loose, but the back is still bound quite closely together, which is why you get this movement to the wax. So when you get a grip on it, you'll see that the whole thing seems to move, but just not enough to be able to get any kind of uh, meaningful grip on it. So we're going to switch back to the crocodile forceps again, see if we can try and take out one of these uh, pieces of wax that are bound together. You can see as we get a grip on it, it's just pulling, but that back end of wax is still holding it in quite firmly. There we are, so quite a large piece there. Left some behind at the entrance to the canal. Now we're starting to get the first glimpse of the eardrum now, so we know we're we're getting somewhere now as far as this wax is concerned. There you can see just how dry that, that underside of the wax is. There's lots of bits of white dry skin there. Okay, so I can just see the top of the eardrum there, that little sort of greyer patch of skin you can see in the top portion of the canal. Just going to grab this leading edge. You can see it's almost like layers upon layers of dry uh, plates of wax in here. Got to be a little bit more careful now because obviously the back end of this wax is going to be that little bit closer to the drum. You can see the top section it was just folding back a little bit. So if we can detach this front end here. Here we go. It should allow us to get a better grip on the piece that's behind. There we are. Now you can see a lot more of the eardrum. The eardrum itself looks nice and shiny, but we've got one piece of wax that's sitting quite deep in the canal. There we go. There's the eardrum. You can see all the dry skin around the outside edge as well there. So this is the same patient now with the other ear. Now not as much wax in this side. There is a little gap at the top here. But rather than let it carry on and get to the kind of uh, levels of wax that we saw on the other side, we said we'd address this one today. So you can see just as dry as the other ear. And just as narrow as well. So it's not still not the easiest ear to work in. But because we have got this little gap, it means that we can work just beyond the edge of the wax and roll it forwards out of the canal which is what we're doing here so we're getting rid of some of these drier pieces and we've got quite a large lump of wax just in the base of the canal here so i'm trying to work this down the canal but you can see just how tough it is and where it's really kind of pressed into the base, uh, into the, the bottom of the canal. Can you see it's almost like a plate? And as we're lifting from the front end, it's actually raising the back end of the wax a little bit. So we're just going to try and go a little bit deeper. Just so tough. You can see the eardrum there, so we can see the back end of this is not touching the eardrum, which is great. Um, there is a bit of a gap there, but you can see where it's all kind of quite firmly attached itself to the, the right hand canal wall. So, what I'm doing now is trying to get between the wax and the canal wall to lift, see if we can lift this front end. Because sometimes, if you detach it enough, you can get behind and get the traction you need to take this out. You can see it's really, really not budging very well. So a crocodile forceps going in. I'm hoping if we can get between the wax and the canal wall with the edge of the forcep, 
we can lift and get it off the canal wall. You can see just how firmly attached that is. Try and loosen it off the canal wall while pulling at the same time. So we might, you can see there was a little bit of movement there. See all these little dry flaky bits? Okay, now we're starting to see a bit of movement to it. There. Can you see it lifting off the canal wall now? Getting behind it, bringing it forwards again. You can see just how much dead skin is underneath this. That piece of wax has been trapped against that canal wall for quite some time. Big old chunk there. There's the eardrum. A little tiny bit of dry uh, skin there and dry wax, so we'll just get rid of that. And there's the drum itself, all looking nice and healthy. So as you can see, there was a fair amount in here. Well, we've got 11 and a half centimeters all together between both ears, four and a half inches. So a very, very uh, deep seated dry wax. Thank you very much for watching our video today. If you did enjoy the video, then please like. If you're not subscribed already, you'd like to do so, you can click the subscribe button here. If you'd like to check out some more of our videos, they're also up there. Now, if you want to follow us, you can do on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also check our website if you want to know a little bit more about us. As always, guys, until the next time, take care.